Apparently, the Taliban have detained several members of the Afghani government, and I guess they were also, they were executing some of the soldiers, civilian leaders, etc. And the statements are uh, just unbelievable. They said uh, executions of surrendered Afghan troops. They, they, the U.S. Embassy in Kabul tweeted, uh, the escalating Taliban violence don't erase Afghan, Afghanistan's human rights gains of the last 20 years. I don't think the Taliban cares about that. They also tweeted, we're hearing additional reports of Taliban executions of surrendering troops. Deeply disturbing and could constitute war crimes. Oh, war crimes? I'm sure that people who have no problem with turning teenage girls or, and children into sex slaves and, and, and murdering, committing acts of terror, I'm sure they're so concerned about your accusation of war crimes. Here's one of the things. I don't care what people thought about Trump. I really don't. You can't compare the results that you got from Trump to this. You can't. People would say, Trump's so mean on Twitter. Can I be real with you? I don't know if I've ever conveyed with you how much, or conveyed to you, how much I actually appreciated the mean tweets. I had zero problems with the mean tweets. I loved the weeping and gnashing of the teeth of all the people who every other day of the week, they themselves had mean tweets. But oh my gosh, Donald Trump t tweets something mean and they just can't handle it. I loved the idea. I loved the, it was an idea, it was a fact. I liked that we had a president who actually scared some of uh, the foreign leaders out there. Kane, we've talked about this. When he was, <laughs> when he was mocking short stack down there in North Korea, or he was, he was talking smack about Xi Jinping, whoever it was. I wanted leaders of other countries to think that our, that the Americans were crazy enough to elect a nut, someone who would blow you the hell up from Twitter. I wanted them to think that I wanted them to go to bed at night thinking the same fingers that are tweeting these things at us could be the same ones that punch that red button or at least pick up the phone and make the call, right? I wanted them to have that in their heads. If he's going to say this to us on Twitter, oh my gosh. And remember, you always heard from the left, oh, this is just going to ramp up violence and it's going to escalate tensions. It didn't escalate tensions in North Korea. I mean, North Korea was like, wow, I guess maybe we should stop feeding our family members to dogs if, you know, if you're Kim Jong-un. Maybe we should listen to the, to the president of the United States, huh? No, I liked that. Didn't he threaten him one time? Like, I'll rain rockets down, and then they start calling him Rocket Man. I, I, I wanted people to be in fear of the commander-in-chief. That's kind of how, I think that's how it should work. And now we have a guy who can't even follow the sidewalk to the damn door at the White House on video. <sighs> but at least we have nice tweets again. It's so amazing. Really? It's worth it? Worth it to you for that? So I, I, I see pictures. The Taliban seized, what, 100 U.S. Humvees, uh, all kinds of drones, billions of taxpayer dollars. Thanks. That's how my money was spent because of a hasty, it, and it was a hasty withdrawal. They had no peace deal or follow-up, nothing. They're just like, okay, we're out. Let's go. All Trump said during his administration is that he wanted everybody to get out. But at the same time, there were people that were in the administration that wanted to negotiate some kind of deal to where people weren't going to die. Meanwhile, Biden's like, get out, get out. It's like they all, like they were going to have everybody run from the base like it was a teenage party getting raided. <sighs> Billions of dollars. Yeah, you all here, everybody's, everybody can't even get like, you can't even get a decent price on a used car anymore. Everything's so expensive. But I, uh, have you seen the Taliban over there driving around in those sweet Humvees that we all paid for? Yeah. I'm going to try to hold my, yeah, my tongue on this one. Now, here's this. Audio soundbite 19. MSNBC, Richard Engel. I, I have to give credit where due. He fact-checks Biden on Afghanistan. Listen to this. Is the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well equipped as well as equipped as any army in the world and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban it is not inevitable 
There is not a cohesive, well-armed, well-equipped, uh, well-led Afghan army right now. Uh, the Afghan army has been surrendering. It has been losing territory. It has been giving up weapons to the Taliban. Uh, in many cases, the units don't fight at all. I, I, there was, there's a lot of discussion about the willpower to fight. There's a lot that goes into this. I mean, it's 20 years over there. And as I've said, I understand the conserv- some of, you know, some of my friends on the conservative side of things. I understand some of those who say, well, this is, you know, it were it, 20 years of decentralized Taliban and we and we, it kept them from from carrying out more terror attacks, etc. But at the same time, that that's a separate issue from the ridiculous way in which we're leaving right now. I mean, for crying out loud, the Biden administration I, I'm sure that you heard this soundbite. We played it with Jim so- Jen Psaki yesterday. They were talking about how negotiators were trying to get assurances. This is a New York Times piece also. They were trying to get assurances from the Taliban that the Taliban would not attack the U.S. Embassy in Kabul if the Taliban took over the government. If they ever wanted to receive foreign aid, they better not attack our U.S. Embassy. So just, just to put that in pers- into perspective, the Biden administration... On behalf of the United States of America, as we approach the 20th anniversary of 9-11, was telling the terror group, the Taliban, that if they want to receive foreign aid, you better not touch our embassy. 